What's up everybody? So this video is actually a response video to somebody that actually just subscribed to me. Big Daddy O John Bamford. John Bamford and I had a pretty long discussion regarding my recent video where I discuss the events of January 6th and the siege of the Capitol. So what I'm going to do is give a really short summary of each point that he made. And for each of those, I'm going to give you my response. So the first comment is white privilege is a myth so that people of color can feel better about themselves and make excuses about their problems. So these observations are misunderstood as excuses. The observations of, you know, of the fact that people of color are treated different to white people. First of all, they're misunderstood by a, a, a particularly right wingers. They're not excuses. The reason why these things are pointed out when people know about them, they can better navigate the social world and to help would be racists not become racists. When people are able to understand the obstacles that, that are in their own way, the better that they can figure out ways to succeed. And then the more people that understand the obstacles that other communities face, the less likely they are to blame them and develop racist views. That's less likely to happen. But when people are not aware, it's easier for them to blame the impacted communities and develop prejudice and racist attitudes. So awareness is key. But when you get people who misunderstand and resist, I'm not privileged. That leads to bad outcomes. Another point that you made, people struggle every day, including white people. How are they privileged? So white privilege is a group phenomenon. The fact that individuals struggle, that's irrelevant because of course you can have a particular white individual be more privileged than a particular black individual. But we're talking in terms of group versus group. Imagine a race, rabbit versus turtle. You know that as a group, rabbits are more privileged than turtles are to do a race. They're just built to run faster than turtles are. Now imagine one particular rabbit who is handicapped and can't even run as fast as a turtle. In that particular instance, the turtle is more privileged than the rabbit. Still doesn't negate that as a group, rabbits are more privileged than turtles in a race. You then sort of say, sure, the idea of white privilege is an actual academic observation. Who cares? Because now SJWs have twisted it. And there's also academics out there that say that there are more than two genders and that men can have periods. Let me respond to that. No, it's just that they also misunderstand white privilege and they use it incorrectly, which pisses people off, particularly when they use the, when they say things like check your privilege. That's stupid as fuck. The way that people of color can benefit from white privilege is simply that the lighter skin they are for any particular racial group, the more they benefit, benefit in a society where there is white privilege. Think about like black celebrities. Most of them tend to be light skin. Black women that are in film, singers, you rarely get women who are dark skin. The lighter skin they are, the more privileged they are to be chosen for these fields. Darker skin women, it's not that they're not trying, they're trying, right? They just are chosen less. Light-skinned Mexicans or light-skinned light Hispanics or even actual white immigrants from Europe who, who live in Latin America are always preferred for television roles. They don't go around complaining like, you know, there's no such thing as white privilege. They know that there's white privilege, they know it. You have a, a society, for example, in Mexico where the original Mexicans, they had, you know, civilizations with advanced architecture, mathematics, but now they're relegated to the lowest positions in society. They're the dirt poorest. You, you never see Native Americans, Native American Mexicans in film. They're not in universities. And, and it's not for lack of trying. There are no laws that, that allow people to be racist against them. They're just discriminated against, period. Now, the gender thing is also misunderstood. The problem is that they mix up sex and gender. There's no serious academics that say that there's more than two sexes. For humans, we have male and we have female. Gender is a completely different thing and that is the issue. I don't want to get too too deep into gender, but I'll just say that uh, gender has been used interchangeably with sex. But nobody is saying, oh, I feel like a different sex. Gender is your presentation, you know, the way you dress, your short hair, your masculinity, that's man versus woman femininity okay by the way there have been more than two genders a lot of native american tribes had three genders they had one called burdash and there's other societies around the world that have more than two genders it's not a new thing you also mention 
how actors get their roles and that it's essentially through connections. Bingo, it's due to networking. This is also tied to white privilege. People in our networks tend to be people like us, ethnically, racially, socioeconomically. When you have a job, your friends that you get into jobs are going to be people that look like you, racially, ethnically, socioeconomically. Because this country was founded by white people and they initially had all the positions of power, and they still do, it was hard for minorities to get in. That's why you have things like affirmative action. Knowing that everybody in our networks tend to look like us, and then you have all the positions, all the good jobs held by white people. And you know, you just said, people get jobs by who they know. What's going to happen in any particular industry? They're only going to get people in that happen to look like them, right? And so affirmative action was created to open the door for people of color to get in and then start to bring in more people of color that look like them as well. Okay, now, there are different types of privileges. Gender privilege, the socio class uh, privilege, there's height and attractiveness privilege. So for example, gender, you wanna go to a club, you wanna get in, you know, cut in line, probably gonna be more likely that you're allowed to cut in line if you're a woman, particularly attractive woman. That's her privilege as a woman. Social class. I think, I, I'm pretty sure you would not argue that the wealthier you are, the more privileges you have in general, right? So I won't even get into examples of that. Height and attractiveness. Look, attractive people, the taller you are, the more likely you are to become president. The taller and more attractive you are, the more likely you are to be hired for a job compared to somebody with the same qualifications that is shorter and less attractive. That is height and attractive pri privileges. That's how it works. But the thing is, that white privilege cuts across all of these. So for example, a white woman is gonna have more uh, privileges than a woman of color. A white wealthy person is gonna have more privileges than a wealthy person of color. A tall, good looking white person is going to have more privileges than a tall, good looking person of color. You then say, maybe the protesters can be controlled. Hey, then maybe the, the protests should be banned. You can't ban protests. It's a constitutional right. Should we ban guns? We can't control people shooting each other. People shoot each other on the streets uh, every day in the United States. Should we ban guns? See a little bit of the hypocrisy there? Coming from a lot of right-wingers who I did see say, you know what, the protests should be banned. If they can't be controlled, then they should be banned. We shouldn't ban protests and we shouldn't ban guns, right? They're, they're at the heart and soul of America. You then try to point out how, how BLM riots may have been worse than the Capitol siege and that that's the reason for the lax response by law enforcement that day. And that BLM was actually asking for too much. They were entitled and that black owned businesses were burned down. So, so much for black lives matter, right? Mattering. My response, facts are facts. So out of all the people at the Capitol, a smaller percentage actually attacked the Capitol. It was not everybody. Only those people should be held accountable. During the BLM protests, same thing. Sure, bring them to justice. The people that were actually rioting and looting, bring them to justice. Same thing, bring the people that broke into the Capitol, bring them to justice. While we're at it, bring in the cops that instigated people to riot. Bring them to justice as well. Those few rioters and looters don't define BLM as a whole and what it stands for. Same for the people that, that broke into the Capitol. They don't define all of Trump supporters. Now, entitlement, because they supposedly asked for things, BLM, that's a whole other conversation, but who cares? But the main ask, the main ask of BLM was a righteous one, don't, don't you think? Please don't unnecessarily kill our people. I don't have a problem with that. And by the way, regarding the last statement, don't get it twisted, 93% of all BLM demonstrations across the entire country, there was no rioting nor looting. The rioting we did see was recycled over and over by the supposed liberal media. For those of you saying like, oh, they're trying to push an agenda, why do they keep showing uh, looting and rioting and, and build particular buildings burning that then right-wingers say, oh my God, entire cities are burning. No cities burn. A few buildings here and there burn. That's not okay, but cities didn't burn. And so why did the news do that? Well, because at the end of the day, that gets more views. Peaceful protests, they don't get all the views. And for those that did happen to become violent, right? The BLM protests that did become violent, a lot of times it was due to police antagonisms or outside agitators that infiltrated 
the peaceful protests. All right, so let's go back to white privilege, what it actually means and how I was able to conclude that perhaps the people who overtook uh, ca the Capitol on January 6th were treated leagues less harshly than almost certainly would have been the case if it was any other group, like Muslim Americans or Black Panthers, even feminists. Have you seen videos of cops allowing people to punch and break windows around their head? Because I didn't see any during BLM protests. As soon as somebody even stood up to cops, they got the beat down during the BLM protests. You should see what they got away with during the Capitol siege. I mean, I've seen black videos of black individuals get shot and killed for way less. Dude, evidence for white privilege is very well documented and supported by tons of evidence. After looking at, at the data, that the patterns that emerge are that in general, white people are treated better than people of color. People of color are treated harsher in a wide range of circumstances. That is what's called white privilege as a phenomenon. It's a group phenomenon. In one of your comments, you actually provided me a source that demonstrates, demonstrates white privilege, such as getting harsher sentences. You said, no, look at this article. It shows that there's none. You even begged the question, maybe there were other issues that made it so that white, uh, white offenders get more lenient sentences. In other words, that gives them the privilege of leniency. The article that you did link me was from England. That's the first thing. I'm talking about the United States, but that's fine. In your article that you linked starts out by saying that the study found no evidence of a disparity in sentencing of white offenders versus people of color. And that's probably why you linked it, but you didn't, maybe you didn't read the whole entire thing. That article that you linked cited studies that did indeed find harsher sentencing for blacks than whites in the US and how those studies did account or control for facts surrounding the case. So in other words, with everything being equal, like previous criminality, blacks do get harsher sentencing than whites in the article that you linked me. So you should read it. So Big daddy -o, uh, John Bamford, what does that sound like? Sounds like white people have the privilege of benefiting from lighter sentences than black people, white privilege. Before I present more evidence, I wanna address something that you mentioned, okay? You essentially say, well, hey, the fact that police view black people as more threatening, if that's the case, maybe there's a good reason behind it. There are Somali pirates, and in the 1800s, the Zulus kicked our asses. So maybe there's good reasons for white people to be cautious around people of color. And before I address that, let me just say that they do view them as more threatening. There's been studies subconsciously. Remember, they don't actually even know that they're doing it. And this is not limited to white police officers. Black police officers also view black people as more threatening. Black police officers are also more likely to use a more force against black individuals than they are against white individuals. Countless psychological experiments have shown this. Now, the black community does have higher crime rates. Nobody denies that. There are reasons for that, like poverty, for which there's also explanations for as to why the black community uh, have such high poverty rates, right? That's a whole different conversation, but there are explanations for that. It's true for all humans. Poor communities have higher crime rates in every country, every race, and with black Americans having had such oppressive history of racism, that's translated, you know, for them to have uh, higher rates of poverty and then crime. So this is 100% expe uh, uh, expected considering this, but it doesn't mean that we just accept it when completely innocent black individuals are killed or bru brutalized by the police. You can't blame the, the, the black individuals that are being brutalized because of the way that the police officers see their community. And so the goal is to, to make people and the police aware of these biases. That's the reason why people keep pointing to these, to these, you know, systemic racism so that people can be like, oh, we all have unconscious biases that lead us to maybe treat people differently based on their race. Okay, I'll keep that in mind so that we can try to be as fair as possible. And then the cops with this in mind, maybe they'll kill innocent individuals that don't deserve to be killed less. And there definitely are reasons also other than race for these issues, sure. But first, those reasons are rooted in racism, for especially for African Americans, right, and people of color. And two, there are also reasons purely based off of race. And so with all this being understood, let me ask you, what do we call the judging of people by the actions of others in their group? This whole thing about like the Zulus and when they were tribes, they were more violent. Isn't that judging certain individuals based off of the perceptions of their group in the first place? What do we call that? That's racism. So if cops do do that, they 
are being racist which is what your whole argument is against that blacks really suffer no racism so guess i win in regards to the zulu slash tribal comment which which i thought was kind of weird because like i don't know if if you're trying to say like there's a genetic thing or... remember world war ii which was way more recent and killed millions of people that was white people killing white people and by the way white people also lived in tribes and killed each other in ancient europe should we be careful around white people i don't think so right those were those were people from the past same thing with with people of color let's move into some actual legitimate evidence of the disparities uh of how white people are treated in society compared to people of color right in other words white privilege really quick before i do let me just address the quick gender disparity between men and women and how women are more likely to die remember you said hey maybe men are just physically stronger and more durable so maybe you missed what i had said previously because i specifically said that the researchers found that biology between you know the sexes was not a factor nor was overt sexism i remember the most common and concerning form of racism is the unconscious type, which is what the researchers determined it was. Doctors simply take women less seriously when they complain of chest pain. They're not doing it because like, oh, you're a woman. Mm, I don't believe it. it's unconscious, right? They're not. They don't mean to discriminate. Uh, so that takes care of the gender thing. Now, uh, check this out, okay? There was a study done of Uber and Lyft drivers in Boston and Seattle. And this found that blacks had to wait 35% longer for some rides, okay? That drivers are more than twice as likely to cancel rides when the names of the uh, passengers sound black. They're more than twice as likely to cancel them than when they sound white. Seems like white Americans have the privilege, the ride-sharing services, are less likely to make them wait longer and to cancel on them. Privilege. More medical issues. You ever heard of sickle cell? Sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell affects three times as many Americans than cystic fibrosis. Let me repeat that. Sickle cell affects three times as many Americans than cystic fibrosis does. Despite that, the government spends four times more on cystic fibrosis then on sickle cell. Sickle cell affects three times as many Americans than cystic fibrosis. Yet, they spend four times as much on cystic fibrosis. 90% of the people that suffer from sickle cell are black. Cystic fibrosis affects mostly white people. White Americans have the privilege of the government spending more money on health issues that affect them. White privilege resumes from getting jobs remember you said maybe if the black community stop using excuses and they get up off their arses you said that okay okay did you know that there's actually a famous study where people created resumes identical same qualifications the only difference is names that sound white john bamford right uh and then other ones names that sound black right like maybe like tyrone johnson or jermaine jones right names like that exact same qualifications but the ones that have white sounding names got way more callback than the resumes that have names that sound black sounds to me like having white sounding names comes with a privilege of getting more callbacks when you send out a resume and then check this out there was this graduate student who kept being told by ex-convicts that he knew that it was really hard to get a job because they had a criminal record they decided to do a study pairs of men were sent to a block to apply to 350 jobs one team was white men another one was black each of them had someone who pretended to have been in prison for for cocaine possession men without prison records got two to three times more callbacks. I'm pretty sure you'd agree. Well, no surprise. But what about this? Here's a surprise. White men with prison records were more likely to be offered a job than black men with no record. Sounds like the white men had the privilege, despite saying that they had been convicted, of, of being offered jobs compared to black men that had clean records. And then another study found that whitening your resume increases chances for callbacks for people of color. So like for me, my, my name is Alejandro, right? A pretty distinctly Hispanic name. If I were to change it to Alexander, I'd get more callbacks. 
and then also putting things like interest more associated with like white americans right like like hiking and like outdoors like skiing and things like that more likely to to get uh, callbacks okay this is regarding bank lending okay when researchers were examining loan applications they found that bankers were more likely to refuse minorities loans so they confronted the the bankers okay when they confronted them the bankers were like us racist of course not whites just have better credit histories which is something that you probably would say so they controlled for that they checked applicants with with identical credit scores still bankers were 60 percent more likely to reject black and latino applicants and this continues to to this day hmm so what does this all sound like we can make all the excuses in the world oh golly gee maybe this maybe that okay over and over and over again and every time researchers take a deeper look it's never those things so in my opinion if you're reasonable john bamford you'll say yeah sounds like white you know what like whites have privilege that people of, of of people of color don't and that doesn't you know that doesn't make white people evil it doesn't it's not on purpose most of these disparities are due to unconscious biases they're ingrained in all of us and all of us hispanics tend to discriminate against hispanics as much as white people do african americans tend to discriminate against african americans and against hispanics as much as white people do right it's unconscious okay it doesn't mean that we just say ah fuck it that's why it's important to point it out right awareness helps that's the whole point for why people point it all out in the first place so that people can be like oh okay so that's happening hmm i'll be more careful or or you know you know let's make the world, the world a better place it's not to shame anybody to you know to say white people are evil which, you know, which is what so many people on the right think. Again, are there dumbass SJWs that do try to, you know, make white people feel bad or guilty or like they're just evil for being white? Absolutely, right? But you know what? Fuck them. That's not what this is about. Remember, white privilege is a group phenomena. So when, when white Trump supporters storming the Capitol aren't met with rubber bullets from cops and are instead allowed to you know, allowed to go in and allowed to break windows uh, uh, and allowed to take selfies with the cops. We can't at that moment say it's because they're white. But at the same time, we could because for whatever reason that cops allowed it, they have now just become a statistic supporting the phenomenon known as white privilege. Same for when a black individual is shot uh, to death by a police officer simply because he was walking away. We can't say, oh, it's because they were black. But at the same time, we kind of could because for whatever reason that that cop decided to shoot that black individual, okay, at that moment, that became a statistic that supports the phenomena known as white privilege. Think about everything I said. If you still have questions, let me know and I'll try to address them. If you enjoyed my video, don't forget to give me a like, okay? If you also have questions and you want me to make a response video to your questions, Hit me up. Let me know. Say, hey, uh, what's up, Channel Wall? Can you do a response video to these questions? And, and write them all down, okay, in the comments. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.